The year was 1969, Ferndale, California. Jack Mays, a metal sculptor, wandered down the street to see what his friend Hobart was working on. Hobart showed him the Pentacycle, a five-wheeled, human-powered kinetic sculpture. I can do better than that, exclaimed Jack with bravado, and challenged Hobart to a race during the Mother's Day Art Festival. By the time the race day rolled round, word had gotten out that there was going to be a kinetic sculpture race, and eleven entries lined up at the starting line. Neither Jack's tank nor Hobart's pentacycle made it across the finish line that day. The honour went to Bob Brown's tortoise, the first kinetic sculpture race grand champion. In 1973, Barbara Ludwig, Hobart's girlfriend and kinetic pilot, decided that the race needed a queen, so she invented the Rutabaga Queen title and took the job herself. The street race drew a lot of attention and swiftly grew into a huge event in Tiny Ferndale. In 1974, after exploring the Humboldt Bay, the Ferndale Explorers Club challenged Hobart to a cross-country race, starting on April 13th at Fields Landing and ending in Ferndale. There were three races that year. The yo-yo took 26 days to finish the course, but rolled into Ferndale for the Mother's Day Kinetic Race Streets Race. cross-country race exploded in popularity after being covered by the national media and attracted beer sponsor Coors. Hobart's team hosted Good Morning America host Steve Fox, which propelled Hobart's race into the public eye. In 1987, after the Galumpy brothers had won six races in a row, Hobart changed the point system of the race to allow for art points in addition to the speed and engineering scores. Ken Beidelman's bionic blue coach was the beneficiary of the new Grand Champ title. <laughs> Calistoga had started sponsoring Dwayne Flatmo and moved into sponsoring the race in the 1990s. The race by 1990 had evolved into the three-day event in which pilots must traverse the land, the sand, the water, and sometimes mud. During the 90s, Yakima stepped up to sponsor a new lab for Ken Beidelman and his teams, enabling the big three to dominate kinetics. Dwayne Flatmo, Ken Beidelman, and June Mokson's teams traded grand championship honors back and forth, bringing fabulous whimsical creations to the race every year and elevating the expectations for art. The only challenges to the big three were Alan Krauss and Rob Hitchcock, who rode Top Banana, the Art of Speed, and Narahodo the World to the Grand Championships. In 1993, the film It'll Have Blinking Eyes and a Moving Mouth was released by Jeb Berg. The documentary was a tribute to Hobart Brown and other racers who have not only sculpted magical vehicles, but also magical lives. This is a race, so they're trying to become first. However, they're not going to forget the fact that the crowd is watching and it is an art event and they want to impress them. In 2001, Hobart sold the race to the Humboldt Kinetic Association, a loose group of non-profits who kept the race running until the Rudebaker Queens took the baton and formed the Kinetic Universe non-profit that continues to run the race today. In November of 2007, Hobart Brown passed away. So much of our lives are filled with everyday hassles, wrote Dwayne Flatmo. Bills to pay, work and other responsibilities. 
Hobart went forward to roll out the giant red carpet, leading us to a big stage called the Kinetic Sculpture Race for all of us to act out our ideas, fantasies, and alter egos. A place we could forget all our daily problems and come together as one big family with a common thread. It is up to us to carry on, knowing that little bit of him is in each of us and spread the joy he found and brought to us. Hats off to Hobart Brown. In the water now, you're going to see our propeller system, which hasn't been tested yet, but we've got a real good feeling about it. The Kinetic Sculpture Race has run every year, for 51 years, through stormy weather, or disagreements over who should run the race, or what the course would be. As Ken Beidelman said, we know how to find the plaza at noon. But this year, everything is different. We are sheltering in place and sending our films to Humboldt. Wishing with all our heart that we could be struggling over June's dunes, pacing ourselves up Melvin's Mile, or blasting down Dead Man's Drop. People ask us why we would do such a thing. In the famous words of Barbara Ludwig, fully dressed, dragging herself up out of the muddy water after her craft and sunk, for the glory.